What's going on everybody, Iconic Repaints? Got a new video today, it's actually going to be pretty familiar to you if you follow the channel already. This is the video for my fifth build of the Tease Facto Godzilla Evolution 2. Um, fourth one being a completely different paint job, I've actually done one as a commission that was a carbon copy of one that I have done prior. So as the build journey flashes in front of you between these pictures um, to how we got to where we got, I'm pretty much going to just breeze right through a lot of details here. Like I said, I've done multiple videos on this kit before. Um, so if you want to hear more information about that, uh, please check out my other videos. I've done numerous versions of this. I wanted to do something new this time. And I, when I first started this kit, I did it in more neutral Godzilla-ish colors. And I always wanted to play like on a particular trait of Godzilla, like whether it be like an ancient god or a radioactive powered menace. And then I did for a commission, I did the Ulrey poster version from the Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla poster from 93. That's a color scheme. I took, I took a little bit to figure out what I wanted to do with this one. And I noticed when Godzilla came out, um, you know, monsters and dinosaurs were really one tone like they were that's when like dinosaurs were depicted as being basically one color and nowadays nowadays they are portrayed with definitely more diversity so what if Godzilla was invented in a modern time and I recalled being a kid and collecting the Jurassic Park dinosaur toys and there was one that stood out there was the Spinosaurus from the Lost World that had this really cool paint scheme that I never thought I'd see again, but it just kind of popped into my head. Like what if I used kind of like those certain kind of colors and just go from there? So I started slowly incorporating um, colors closer to that as you see here. I was really liking the result more and more. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and show what the final product is and then I can get into that a little more. All right, guys, so this is him. This is the fifth build of the Godzilla Evolution 2. Like I said, this is um, the sculptor's take on what his version of Godzilla would be from the movie Godzilla 2000 Millennium. In true Tease Facto fashion, you see hyper-aggressive details, very menacing and powerful muscle structure. Now, I talked about you know how dinosaurs back then were they were typically all brown or shades of black and gray um what yeah what if godzilla was invented today i mean in the movie there is sort of like a ambiguity where um part of the explanation for godzilla's existence kind of is more scientific and it's a dinosaur or a massive predator that existed and survived all these years until he was transformed from the atomic bomb but also there is a spiritual explanation as well that's also given from the villagers in Odo Island that have this myth about this sea monster that they used to sacrifice girls to and that its name was Godzilla and to me I always took it as one wasn't exactly more literal than the other you have two explanations and you still have this mystery in between so I went with the concept of what um, maybe a modern day Godzilla would take if you went with the notion that he's not necessarily a dinosaur but just a very ancient deep sea creature and I thought it'd be really cool to kind of take those colors that I specifically pointed out with that Spinosaurus figure and incorporate them into something that was a little more akin to being something that belonged living deep underneath the sea so all his colors to me are inspired by something very oceanic um, maybe a little bit of bioluminescence just little ideas that were popping off in my head i wanted all the colors though on his body to feel like something very earthly and from the ocean as well so from the greens the purples there's a little bit of coral color as well uh, just i wanted you to kind of like have that notion that he's like the pure spectral embodiment of the ancient mysteries of the oceans of the sea now i added a little bit of metallic blue into the paint job this time so when i take this guy outdoors as you saw in pictures before 
Uh, the light really bounces off of him and reflects off of him, but I wanted something that not only popped when it was outside for like a photo shoot, but really it had to still be bright enough to really look great on a shelf in indoor lighting also. Now, unless you're doing like a burning Godzilla you or, or a Shin Godzilla, you really don't get an excuse to go crazy with the colors on Godzilla. It kind of has to be a new concept. I mean, there's only so many powered up blue spines or orange spines that I could do, uh, you know, before you just kind of like run its course, right? So I don't know. I had, to, I had to come at this from a different approach with this guy. I really didn't want to do something that I've done already done. It, it make you know, the... the Building a kit is already kind of tedious, especially doing the same one five times. So if I needed an excuse to really go ham on this guy um, and just kind of get it out of my system, I really think this design works in both ways. You could go very screen kind of accurate or you could go crazy and do something totally original. But anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Everybody be safe. Enjoy your 4th of July. Please, let's all make it to July 5th with all of our fingers. All right, take care. Peace.